Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Okay, this morning we're going to be talking about holy ground, <clears throat> and one of the places that mentions it pretty good is in Exodus 3, 1, which you have on your paper. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why does the bush uh, is not burning? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not near, near, the, near hither, but put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where on thou standest is holy ground. In Acts chapter 7, it has a smaller version of this. Uh, where it's talking about uh, to, for Moses to take off his shoes because he's on holy ground. So think about this. Uh, taking off your shoes for he was on holy ground. Think about that for a minute. Why was it holy ground? Uh, also think about now Moses had, was, I guess, he had to leave quickly for Egypt because they were after him. And he ends up in this area here. He meets... Uh, his future wife, which he ends up marrying, and uh, his father-in-law there is Jethro, which is a priest, and talks tells him about the mount God of uh, the mountain of God, which it says here, you know, they call it the mountain of God, and all, and uh, he ends up seeing this take place. So I want to talk about this today. God is holy is my first point. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And then I think, you know, what are some things? You know, we hear this. Obviously, I've said it many times in sermons. But what about the tabernacle and the holy of holies? Now, the tabernacle was a portable thing that they put together every time they stopped as they were traveling through the uh, the, the land, waiting to get in the canna. Canna. And uh, every time they stopped, they would put that together. And it had the uh, tabernacle had the big fence around it, and then inside was the holy place, and then inside the holy place was the holy of holies. And nobody could enter the holy of holies but the priest, and only one time a year did he did that. Uh, the sh- the uh, tab- uh, yeah. Boy, I haven't had this happen in a long time. Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies and all. And you have to share bins going across it and all. And he would go in there to put blood down. And the purpose was to cover the sins of Israel and all once a year. And, uh, and just so you understand, it was a covering. It wasn't a forgiveness. Okay. It wasn't taken away. It was more or less uh, a, a slight fix until Christ eventually comes and pays the debt. And all. But it takes some studying to see that. But anyhow, uh, it was sacred ground inside there. And he was the only one allowed to go in there. And even if he went in there with one sin in his life, God would kill him. So, And I think I've shared this with you before. They would tie ropes to, their, his, to the priest's ankle. Because if he had went in there and he wasn't prepared, see, he would have to go through a process before he entered there, make sure that he had everything confessed before he entered there. Uh, that's how holy God was when he was there in his presence. So anyhow, if he did go in and he did get killed, nobody could go in and get him. That's what the ropes were for, to pull him out. And all. So that's how that worked. But we have nothing in the Bible saying that he ever got killed, so I guess he did everything right. But the key is, and what I'm trying to share with you is, 
how holy and righteous that ground was in that holy of holies. Why? Because the presence of God was there. Uh, how about, now I've said this many times, Christ on the cross. Now he gets up there, he gets the sin in the world, and the moment that happens, he felt, he knew God turned away from him. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? And he knew why, but that was a tremendous hurt. God the Father could not even look down on God the Son. And I don't think we'll ever totally understand that, other than the fact that we know God the Father is that righteous. He cannot look even at his son when he had the sins. So that was a holy thing, too, that I thought about. Wherever God is, that moment is holy, wherever he happens to be. Now, uh, he tells him to put off his shoes, and that was a token of respect and submission. To, because he was before God there at that moment, at that bush. And by taking off the shoes, uh, he was leaving. This is a sim- more or less like a symbolization that he was, where were the shoes at? Well, he's been walking everywhere on earth. In other words, the symbolization is that when he took off his shoes, he was leaving earthly things behind him while he was in front of God. And I'm going to talk more about that uh, in my next couple other points. The ground was holy, not by nature. It was dirt. But because God's presence was there in that burning bush, it became holy ground. God's teaching us through these verses that he is holy and must be approached God in a holy way. We, and I do this too, so I'm just as guilty. <laughs> we have a tendency to become complacent in what we do for God. And what I mean by that is, and I shared this with you about prayer, how we pray. We get used to praying the same thing over and over again, and next thing you know, we're not really praying from our heart. We're praying just because it's written on a piece of paper. and all. We get complacent. Uh, come into church the same way. I've preached many times that you should be prepared before you come. I'm going to talk some more about that in just a minute. Uh, we got to be careful about that, that when you sit there and think, this is the God that created the universe. And I don't know if you ever watched, uh, I think the title of it is How the Universe Works. Uh, I don't agree with everything they say in there, but they they talk about black matter and all all kinds of stuff in there and that they're finding out and all. all. But what amazes me, and I've always said this to myself, when I get to heaven, you know, when all all, all is done, what the Bible teaches, you know what my job I want to (laughs) do? I want to visit every place in the universe, which will probably be... I don't know if I can, but that's what I would like to do. I would love to see the creation of the universe because it's amazing just watching what they think they know on TV. And now they're not talking about God on that program. And all. But it's just the fact that these galaxies, these, these other things, and, and they think there's an end someplace. And they said if there is, we'll never see it. It's too big. You know, it's infinity. It's amazing. And, and to me, as a young... Well, when we moved down here, one of the things, and I haven't done this in a long time, one of the things that would help me realize who God is is I would go up on a weekday, go to Caesar's Head, and look off and remember, and see how vast Table Rock is. And, 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 it, and it would make me realize, and I would think I would get the same thing if I had the opportunity to look into the Grand Canyon or something that would be so enormous and forget this is only one tiny part of the earth. And that's why watching this program makes me realize this is the universe. I mean, we're one tiny speck in the whole universe and all. It's just amazing. And God created all that. Now here's something else to think about. God did not want Moses coming any closer. I want to make sure I didn't get ahead of myself. God did not want Moses to come any closer. He said, hold, don't come any closer before he said, take off the shoes. No one can look at God and live. This Bible teaches that. The actual 
essence of God. All we ever see is that either like the, the children when they were wondering during the day it was a cloud. Okay, it wasn't the pure, pure essence of God, but it was Him. You know what I mean? In a way that they could see. At night it was fire. And uh, uh, here it's a burning bush. And it said to start off with the angel did the burning bush, and then God spoke through the bush. Okay, if you, if you pick up the words there, but. No one's ever seen that. But, you know, Moses asked God if he could see him, if you remember or not, when he was up on the mountain. Uh, and it's not that this time. This is later when he was with the children of Israel going through. He was up there, you know, doing, he'd go up for the Ten Commandments and other things. Sometimes he'd be up there 30 and 40 days at a time. and all. But one time he said, I would love to see you. And he says, no one can see me and live. But he says, I'm going to grant you something. He made him go into a cliff of a rock, you know, like a cutoff. So he went into it up in the uh, stood there. He said, now I'm going to pass by, and I'm going to let you see the reflection of my back. Now, think about that. He didn't even see the direct back. He just saw the reflection of the back. And what was neat was, after he saw that, when he came down off the mountain, his whole head glue was glowing. It says that in the Bible. You can read that there. The people were scared of Moses because of that, what they saw. They said, what's going on? Look at it glowing and all. And they actually had to put a, a hood over top of him when he was down there. And all, one you could kind of see through. and all, Because the people uh, were afraid. They didn't know what was going on. But I, well, the reason why I'm telling you this is just look at what happened to him just to see the reflection of God. Now, we can't comprehend stuff like this. You know what I mean? We didn't experience it. But it's something to think about. Just like the Holy of Holies, it was sacred ground. Even when he was up in that cliff. And if the priest, again, had to go in, he had to be cleansed. I can't stress this enough. God is holy and righteous and must never... We can't forget that. Now, here's the next point. Point number two, the Bible. The Bible is God's word. Well, we know that. But just like God spoke to Moses, when he, when we open the Bible, God is speaking to us. I want you to start thinking that the moment you're reading the Bible, you're on holy ground. God's sitting there and has that there. He don't come the way he did with the days of Moses or with any of the other prophets. But now... We do it through the Word of God. He's got everything written in there. <laughs> and through the day we die, He's got everything covered. You can't think of a subject He doesn't cover. God speaking. And the moment you open up the Word of God, you start reading that, God speaking to you, to all of us, when we're reading it. And that becomes holy, holy ground right there. I'm going to stress this a little bit more in the next point. God is talking to us. At that point, now think about the, the, the Holy of Holies. You know, we start to read God's Word. We are in His presence, literally, because that's the words He has for us to learn, to change our lives, to do what He wants us to do. We must express His reverence and uh, readiness to obey by doing that. Literally, we need to take off our sandals, the earthly things. In other words. When you're, uh, well, I was picked like the day. Uh, my, my dinner's cooking at home. See, that's an earthly thing. Uh, where am I going to go to eat today? Am I going to the uh, shore and go uh, picnicking? Or, and you got that on your mind while you're in here. See, God's saying, put all that aside when you come here. When it's done, then worry about what you're going to do. But people don't do that. Or you may be worried about a bill or anything. God's saying, take off the sandal because that's earthly thing, earthly soil when you come in. I'm going to talk about that more in just in my next point. we got to be reverent and ready. We must take off our shoes and concentrate on God's Word when we're hearing it and when we're reading it. And when you realize, hey, this is God of the universe speaking to us through that Bible. Now, finally, the church is holy. This building is just a building. But when we're here to worship God 
and learn from it, it becomes a holy ground. And I want to even prove it to you. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So God's right here. This becomes holy ground the moment we come in here to worship God, to learn. With God's presence here, this becomes holy ground. We open the Bible again, and it's holy ground. By Moses removing his sandals is a gesture of worship. We come here to worship. Matter of fact, the last couple, I don't know, some of the sermons I've done in the last month and all, I have it kind of in a sub point have told you, you need to prepare before you come to this building. And I don't mean in the car. I mean at home. Pray about, God, teach me something today when I go to church. Confess your sins. Do Prepare yourself before you come here that God will show you something before you leave. Teach me what I need to know, God. Convict me of my sins that I have before thee. And that why we're coming to the church to learn. Hey, now, just because this is holy ground doesn't mean we can't enjoy each other. Because part of church is having fellowship, getting to know each other, and all that. But never to forget that you're still on holy ground, and this is the Word of God, and you're here to learn and to grow. And that we have to take off our shoes that are soiled with the things of, of the earth. <clears throat> To be as clean as possible before coming to God's house. Now there's one other lesson I want you to think about here in this verse. Verse 4 of our text today. Listen what it says here again. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Notice something here. Moses had to take the first step in order for God to work. He saw the burning bush. God didn't say anything to him. It's when he turned to learn something about the bush, God started speaking to him. And that's what the verse said here. When he turned aside, that's when God started speaking to him. God's not going to sit there and do all this stuff for us if we're not seeking and looking for him. That's when he starts working in our lives. And it's an everyday thing. Every day at work, at play, uh, with their family, when you're enjoying... Uh, yesterday we had the, the whole kids over and we barbecued. I actually barbecued for the first time. I got the meat right. <laughs> I did. I just blew me away. I've never done that yet. I'm not a, a barbecue, uh, uh, the grill and all, but I like the stuff that comes off of it. And uh, But I'm trying so hard of learning. My son's out there. He's telling me, he says, my son, he's a, he, he should be a chef. And uh, he says, Dad, listen, because he saw me start to pick it up. He thought I was going to turn it. I said, no, I'm just seeing what the bottom looks like. Because I've learned to let the, most of the cooking take place on the first surface that you lay it down. But then he says, Dad, I don't know if you know this, but if you leave it there long enough, it will unstick itself. It won't stick. If you try to pull it off too quick, it's, it's stuck. It's not ready to be turned. He says, when it's ready to be turned, you'll be able to pick it up. It won't stick. I went, really? So I, I just waited and waited. And sure enough, when I thought it was just, I, I started using the temperature. But anyhow, uh, I moved it over and it came, every one of them came. None, one even tried to stick. It was amazing. And, uh, and uh, so he was teaching me things. And uh, so I'm learning. I'm eating some leftovers when I get home, too. <laughs> I told my wife, this was the best meal I've ever had. I couldn't believe that I actually accomplished that. It took me years and years to learn this. Anyhow, <clears throat> Moses had to take the first step. Moses saw the bush, and then he decided to learn about it. And after Moses turned to God, God started talking to him. Moses wanted to learn more about what was happening. He knew that this was the mountain of God, and it even tells us that in the verse verse. Uh, Jethro, I, matter of fact, when you, uh, you'll you read it in the Word of God, if you go back into the Old Testament, where he says that that's the mountain of God. He tells Moses about it. We must first turn to God 
before he's going to act with us. That's a given. It's very rare. God does something. And when he does, that's the word of grace comes in where he happens to do something without. And I've had it happen, but it's very rare. <laughs> and most of the time, we have to respond first for God to turn around and do something to us. Moses wanted to learn more and went to the bush to find out. And just as we should go into the Word of God to learn what God wants us to do, it's not enough just to be in church. God knows the heart. I don't know your heart. I mean, I know it if you're sleeping. You know, I can tell you if you're in la-la land. And uh, the one thing they taught us about speech is look in the eyes of everybody, and that's what I do. And uh, Now, if there was 500 people there, it would be kind of hard, but you still look. I mean, when I spoke at South, uh, Southside, not Southside, uh, Heritage, that was, I don't know, uh, what's well, about five, six hundred people. And uh, I look as many as I can when I, I've spoken here several times in the past. I have shown you several things about the holiness of God this morning. God is holy and righteous, period. you got to get a hold of that truth. Where God is at any moment is holy ground. And we got to recognize that. The Bible, when it's open, is holy ground. Because the God is sitting there. When you start reading it, God is speaking to you. And don't get to the point where I haven't been convicted. There is no such thing as that, by the way. Uh, you know, I've had people tell me, well, God didn't convict me of that. The Bible, if you read it carefully, he says its obedience is better than sacrifice. When you read it, you're supposed to do it. Period. You don't worry. You don't. You shouldn't even. I mean, you can pray about it, but you immediately are supposed to make that decision and go and do it. That's why a lot of times we don't get things the way we want. Well, I read it and I did it. I want to do it, but you haven't done it. You got to do it. The Bible, when it's open again, and the church, when we come here, becomes holy ground because we're here. God's in the midst. So just think about that now when you go out today. Think about the close. All I can tell you, if I, I, I can and share anything, is I've learned to be, it's the Philippians, you know, with thanksgiving. It's every prayer with thanksgiving, it says in Philippians. And, uh, and I can't thank, most of my prayer is thanking God because I'm overwhelmed with what I got. I'm no millionaire or nothing, but what God just keeps doing for, for my wife and I. And, uh, and uh, it just blesses. Uh, it's just unreal. Uh, and God just keeps working over and over and over again. And, and sometimes simple. We've been trying to put something on the house or whatever. She can mention what it's called. I never say it right. But uh, little things. <laughs> just, just on the top part. We can't get anybody. Nobody wants to come out because it's too small a job. We call them up and they say, well, I'll let me look at you. I look and you never hear back from them. And yet now we got a guy that's interested in doing it. And it all came through in a very unusual way. To, to, actually, when our hopes were totally gone, then God worked. Isn't that the way he always works? And all, when we keep trying to figure it out ourselves instead of just going to him. And just, uh, I said... Don't let it get to you. Somehow something will happen. And then, and I have a real good feeling because this is the guy that helped my daughter and did her house. And, all, and they were very happy with his work. And all. So it just shows me, again, the lessons of God, and it just gets me so excited. And, all. and I want you, each of you to be that excited or even more and teach me things by coming in and saying, look what God did for me and how he did it for me. And all. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for opening the scripture to me to show me about the holy ground when I'm praying to you, when I'm reading the word of God, when we're gathered here together, two of us or more, you're in our presence. Father, you know our hearts. You know what we really, how much we really love you. Help us to get a hold of this truth. Help us to, to apply it in our lives and help us to seed and start reap, reaping the benefits of just falling in love with you deeper and deeper, deeper and being committed to you and that our lives can be so happy in, in how we live our lives each day. 
even through some of the messes that we live through nowadays with what's going on in the United States. Father, help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.